Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash free. The design view of a report is the view in which you will spend the majority of your time as you create your report. When you create a new report, it is displayed in design view by default. You can see the design tab in the upper left corner of the report design section. Once you have previewed a report using the print preview function, there will also be a preview tab in that same area as well. You can then click on the names of the two tabs to switch between the two views. In design view, you will not see the actual data as it will display in the report, but will instead see the fields and other data objects and the various sections of the report into which you will place these objects. The default design view is divided into five separate sections, which are labeled at the left side of the design view. You will also see both a horizontal and vertical ruler surrounding the report design view as well. The various sections are where we place our report's data fields and other objects. When you place a data field into a report section, its display is in some ways dictated by the section into which you placed the field. We will now examine the default sections of a report and how information placed into those sections will display when we preview the report. The first section that we will examine is the report header. And in the report header, you would place fields of information or other report objects that you only want to display once at the very beginning or top of the report. So this is a common location for report titles, for example. In the page header, objects placed into this section will print at the top of each page of a report. So this is a common location to place report dates, page numbering, and other common header information within a report. If you group information that is the same within a field, like for example all the same states within a state data field, you can then enable a group header, which is where you can place information that would repeat once at the beginning of each set of unique values found within the grouped field. In the details section, if you place data fields and objects there, they will be displayed once for each record or row in the underlying table or query. And so this is often where the bulk of the data in a report appears. We also might have a group footer. And if you group information that is the same within a field, once again like all the same states listed in a state data field, then you can enable a group footer where you could place information that would repeat once at the bottom of each set of unique values found within the grouped field. So this is a common location of subtotals and summary functions that you wish to perform over each set of unique values found within the field by which you created the grouping. We also have a page footer and objects placed into this section will print at the bottom of each page of the report. And this is a common location to place report dates, page numbers, or other common footer information for a report. We also have the report footer, and data fields and objects placed into this section of the report will repeat once at the end of the entire report. So that's commonly used for grand totals or other summary functions that are performed over all the values in the report. Notice that you also have three panes that appear at the right side of the report layout section. These panes are collectively called the explorers. They allow you to view information in a collapsible and expandable outline format. You can click the small plus and minus signs next to the various items listed to expand and collapse information, much like Windows Explorer. In Crystal Reports 10, the three explorers that appear by default are the Field Explorer, the Report Explorer, and also the Repository Explorer. Note that in order to use the Repository Explorer, you will need to log on to Crystal Enterprise, which is a separate application. You can close any one of the explorers by clicking the X in the upper right corner, and you can also view them again by choosing View from the menu and then selecting the name of the explorer you would like to view. In Crystal Reports 11, 
The three explorers that appear by default are once again the Field Explorer, the Report Explorer, and the new Workbench. Note that the Field Explorer and the Report Explorer do appear in the same area of the screen, and you simply click on the tab that shows the name of the desired Explorer in order to view its contents. It's worth noting that the Explorers can be moved by simply clicking and dragging on the small title bars at the top or bottom of each Explorer. They can either be floating over the design area or embedded at the sides of the application window in the same way toolbars can. You can close an Explorer window by clicking the X button at the right end of the title bar above each Explorer. You can then enable their display again by selecting View from the menu bar and clicking on the name of the Explorer you wish to view. If you wish to embed a floating Explorer, simply click and drag it into the area of the report where you would like it to appear. The Field Explorer is a frequently used tool in Crystal Reports. It lists the various types of fields that you can insert into your report. The seven different types of fields are database fields, formula fields, SQL expression fields, parameter fields, running total fields, group name fields, and special fields. You can use the buttons in the small toolbar at the top of the Explorer to perform different functions on the selected fields. So if I wanted a new formula field, I could click on the name and then click the new button at the top of the Field Explorer, for example. The Report Explorer represents the various sections in the outlined layout. You can also click on the name of an object shown in this section to select it using the Explorer. You can also perform additional actions on the object listed in this section by simply right-clicking on the object you wish to manipulate and then clicking on the desired command to perform in the pop-up menu of choices that appear. Like the Field Explorer, this Explorer also has buttons available in the toolbar at the top of the Explorer, which you can click to perform various actions. If you're using Crystal Reports 10, you can make use of the Repository Explorer if you have a connection to a Crystal Enterprise server. And this allows report designers to save various kinds of report objects to the repository for reuse in future reports. You can save text and graphic objects, custom functions, and commands or queries into the repository. You cannot store formulas into the repository, however. Also note that there's a toolbar at the top of the Explorer that contains buttons that you can click to once again perform actions on selected objects in the Repository Explorer. If you're using Crystal Reports 11, you will have the new Workbench Explorer. And this pane allows you to create projects which contain reports. It allows you to easily add, remove, sort, and organize reports into manageable groupings of your own design. And once again, you can use the buttons in this pane to create new reports, and then add reports to the objects that you create. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash free.